I think uh, the diagnosis of chorea starts with uh, trying to figure out whether it's acute chorea or chronic chorea and that will determine management because many cases of acute chorea are due to, for example, infections such, such as Sydenham's chorea. So if you treat the underlying cause um, or, for example, metabolic disorders, so if you treat them then the chorea will go away. A variety of neurodegenerative disorders uh, pre, uh, cause chronic chorea, for example, Huntington's disease is the most common cause of that. And in those conditions, we use a multidisciplinary treatment approach, uh, treating using medications such as, for example, tetrabenazine or maybe risperidone to treat the chorea. Uh, we combine that with medications to treat the anxiety, the depression, uh, irritability. So for example, we might use quetiapine for that um, and then it's important to use an interdisciplinary approach with physiotherapy to ha help with gait and balance issues, uh, dietitian, uh, speech pathologist to help with the swallowing problems. Uh, so we use a multidisciplinary model to treat all the different causes, uh, all the different symptoms rather. So the hyperkinetic movement disorders tend to be the more uncommon condition. So it's not as common as Parkinson's disease. So for example, Parkinson's disease affects one in a thousand people. Huntington's disease affects one in 10,000 people. Uh, so similarly, dystonias, uh, which result in abnormal twisting movements or postures, um, are uncommon conditions that a lot of physicians may not recognize. Uh, the important thing about dystonia is that a lot of the dystonic disorders now can be treated either with deep brain stimulation with very good benefit, and for the focal dystonias, we use botulinum toxin injections with very good benefit as well. Uh, so the dystonia is important to recognize because they are are treatable now. Um, the other disorder I deal with is Tourette syndrome, which results in tics as well as ADHD and obsessive compulsive symptoms. And many of those are treatable, uh, those symptoms are treatable as well, whether it's uh, with cognitive behavioral interventional therapy, habit reversal therapy, behavior modification, or in more severe cases, uh, a variety of different medications. These are all very different problems. So, for example, with the chorea-form disorders, uh, the, it's important to differentiate whether this is an acute onset or a sudden onset, which you look for underlying metabolic causes, or a very slowly progressive problem, in which case it could be Huntington disease or, or one of those, uh, uh, a similar genetic disorder. Um, the dystonias are uh, quite appear quite different clinically, but again are important to realize, be, uh, to diagnose because they're treatable. Uh, with the uh, tick disorders, uh, the most common cause of ticks are transient ticks of childhood, so it's important to recognize that little children, particularly boys, uh, may have ticks that will uh, occur between the ages of three and five and will go away by themselves, so they don't you don't need to over-investigate them, you don't need to treat them, but in cases of uh, persistent tics uh, where you do make a diagnosis of Tourette's uh, syndrome, that you can, there are a variety of interventions that can help those, uh, help both the tics and the associated symptoms quite significantly and improve significantly a patient's quality of life.